Science is simply the word we use to describe a method of organizing our curiosity and to advance further. A very happy morning to everyone gathered here. This is me, Shabnam Tamanna. And this is me, Arshia Fatima. On a science-tastic day here to take a leap forward and introduce you to our very first virtual science exposition, Experientia G2, Grow and Glow. A day without prayer is a day without blessing, and a life without prayer is a life without power. So let us commence our day with prayer by Tanya Shri of Grade 9C. Tingalai potradum, tingalai potradum, pungalatachani, kulirven gurai pondre, anganula galitelan. Nyagi the potradum, nyagi the potradum, namani devi. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. The humblest attribute of a host is that of welcoming. So now, I would like to request our principal sir to welcome our esteemed chief guest, Dr. Anachaveri Devendran. Please, sir. Working on the high-level con uh, cognitive development level, where is our level of thinking? So many people used to say under the apple tree, but why Newton alone has got a unique idea? This is a question, isn't it? So whenever we start questioning ourselves, whenever we started thinking deeper to whatever the concept we encounter, I think there the knowledge widened. Our Indian traditional knowledge is very much <coughs> thought provoking, thinking based. It's not a memory based, inquiry based. We happen to read Mahabharata, there is a beautiful scene where Dharma head of Pandava, was questioned by Nashiketa. Continuously, the questions have come one after another. Dharma was answering it. And all these questions are all thought-provoking, not the previous knowledge base. Our gurus, they used to take their disciples to the nearby forest and making them to <coughs> And develop their inquiry. Why it is happening? How it is happening? But most of the, our Indian education has been restricted with only the bookish knowledge. And of course, instead of blaming the system, as a teachers, of course, they are taking a lot of efforts in improving the thinking level of the children, no doubt at all. But one when they encounter the, their higher studies, are they continuing with the same spirit of inquiry based thinking or learning? That's the question. All of international standardized examination like uh, PISA, where our Indian students couldn't do any much. The reason is that doesn't mean that the Indian students are very weak. But they are restricting themselves with only the knowledge. When they are going to settle in foreign countries, of course, our Indian students are shining to the greater level. This is what my observation is. Because there the opportunities are given to do research. New education policy of India has been framed very well to focus and to develop the research attitude of the children from the grade 6 onwards. So this research-based uh, studies are being carried out in an effective way 
that is each and every one of you can become an young scientist like dr anishavelli devendra thank you a great uh, profile of madam is impressed me a oh, lot because in the general indian studies in focusing on uh, the research and taking herself forward and now she is uh, she is in usa now her time is 11:30 i think if i remember good at 12 o'clock she is waiting at this midnight and meeting all of us hats off to you madam i think oh, this is so only true. because of the greatest oh, commitment you have oh that's my pleasure great. thank you great work. no problem no problem thank you <laughs> and uh, now when we are all asking you to wake up by 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock in the morning eh, during this uh, covid time and making you to be the part of this right that itself is a difficult thing for your parents of course <clears throat> but really again once again let me uh, appreciate the commitment of uh, dr anchali ma'am because that is the thing that uh, take her to the highest position now she is doing uh, post doctoral research in mentech child health and development institute ICA HN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai New York USA she has done her doctor of philosophy in India the Jawaharlal Institute of Postgraduate Medical Education Research that is Jipmer in Pondicherry her area of research is molecular cardiology and vascular biology and she continuously did various research in genetics and now i think her cup of tea is in genetics and doing lot of research in microorganisms i think she has answer for covid 19 also <laughs> her research experience has started from 2007 and till now she is involved herself in various research activities as a, starting as a senior research fellow at pharmaco genomics laboratory in the department of pharmacology in jipmer pondicherry and continued there as a senior research fellow and then she uh, joined in european society of cardiology has done uh, european society of cardiology has given a grant for her research to do the post doctoral research and continuing in uk and then in usa and now her research is being extensively gives her more awards as a best poster award she is very creative since she has been involving in making posters life cycle disease and doing interethnic distribution of variations of uh, five regulatory regions of CYP 2C 19 gene best poster award for the effect of uh, lisinopril and vitamin D3 best paper award first prize for the oral session on functional genomics and ENOS and uh, as part of a uh, jipmer faculty she has done various research research here in india also and her research when uh, she is not doing the research alone she is ready to share her experience and knowledge with the school children college children also and uh, and she has done various uh, guest lectures in international conferences as young scientist herself and her papers and publication usually the scientists uh, uh, will be judged by the yardstick for them as how many papers they have presented and madam have as a presenter so far nearly about 20 plus papers in international journals <coughs> and uh, <coughs> novel sequence identified and submitted in genbank genetic sequence database like her focus is more on genetic 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 really great thing that such a great person has come down and ready to address our children because we are almost not even crossing even the, the first standard level in genes in studying about the genetic so such a way the ma'am has come down to our level and here we have the children of a uh, varying from grade 1 to grade 12 and of course we the teachers are also the Uh, students in getting ready to listen your valuable speech ma'am a great uh, personality and my dear oh, children oh. of course i don't want to say that her speech itself is a very great inspiration for you <clears throat> and usually 
scientists are not given much respect the people are all ready to take up the software profession rather than to become a scientist and when in india when the research projects are getting geared up a lot of supports they are getting for research i think more most of you can take up the science uh, scientist as your career all the best god bless all of you and once again welcome ma'am welcome dr rikshali devendra ma'am for oh, thank you thank you for your valuable time for spending okay. your valuable time and thanks to the parents those who have joined with us also welcome all of you Yeah, first thank and foremost, thank you. Thank you all. Yeah, you want to say yes? Go ahead. Now, I heartily invite Dr. Anicha Veeri Devendran, postdoctoral scientist, Mundit Child Health and Development Institute, Aiken School of Medicine, at Mount Sinai, New York, USA, to enlighten her, us with her thoughts. Please, ma'am. Thank you. You said I can't the right way, so that's how it has to be said. I can't School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Uh, first and foremost, good morning and hello all. And I really thank uh, Mr. Sai Balan for that overwhelming introduction. Uh, I was really very happy to accept the invitation. It's like um, the icing on the cake. So I like public speaking and more to inspire about science and to become like. Um, to start a career in scientific research for the next coming generation is something my area of interest and i thought this would be a great opportunity to share my ideas to you as well so should i proceed with the presentation right i can go ahead right okay ah uh, yes ma'am please ma'am thank you Yeah. Okay. So instead of like talking, like uh, looking at my face, everybody, I thought it would be much boring. So I thought I'll prepare um, a PowerPoint slide. Um. So with your permission, can I start it now? Isn't it? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So like uh, when I got the invitation for this virtual exposition, I was uh, uh, the theme of this exposition: grow and glow. that was kind of like you know very interesting i thought like i will incorporate it in my slide and it has more um, meaning to it to learn and to eventually uh, grow and then glow with the ideas and the new innovations and thoughts that you had acquired um so in my today's talk i'm going to give you a brief about um, some things uh, first and foremost we all know at this current time of covid-19 the impact as such has made a very big uh, impact at the level of the students in going to the schools as well as like in their thinking capacity of like being more uh, stressful in their thinking due to the current pandemic that is going on and schools being closed and obviously with the teachers as such the routine role of a teacher with the teaching and the routine examination conducting of the examination is all kind of like messed up so with this kind of setup there are certain pros and cons so looking to to looking into the pros this period could be used as a very good learning experience for new acquiring new educational skills uh obviously for a good personality development or uh, getting into some indoor physical activities or like welling in virtues of humanity and empathy and this is a very good time to build up one's self confidence and most importantly it's a very good time to learn nature's value but looking into the cons what are the cons obviously there's loss of quality and there's very uh, obvious deprival of education since the routine phenomena of going to school and teaching is all lost and then because of inadequate learning there is delay in examinations and obvious development of anxiety and frustration about future and Finally, lack of outdoor physical activities. 
but this is not the end of the world. We think that the world is going to get over, but not. Why? Because we do not have to panic. We are going to win this anyway. So as Dr. Mr. Sai Balan has already spoken about Newton, I would also like to um, narrate about the story of Isaac Newton. Uh, it was only during one such pandemic what we face right now. Isaac Newton had going through like one such pandemic during his time in the 90s when um, he was also asked to work from home. So when he was obviously asked to work from home, Isaac Newton had to go to a village nearby, which was almost like 60 miles from his college at Cambridge. So he had a very large farm and a very like, uh, you know, obviously a orchard. So we all know what happened, right? What happened? Can you hear me? You can hear me, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, please. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. All right. So I'm going to make this more interactive, right? So I want you to, like, if I'm going to ask something, I want some feedback. Have, okay, ma'am. Yeah? Sure. Yes or no? Yes, so make sure that you guys are not sleeping. <laughs> I'm sorry. To make sure you guys are not sleeping, I'm just going to give you some drill in the feet. Is that fine? Let's make it more interactive. So let's assume this is something like a more casual. This is not for formal at all. Make it more casual. Let's interact, right? So what was um, the idea of uh, Isaac Newton's thing? What happened? Um, while he was sleeping, the apple just uh, fell on his uh, head. And uh, like he just thought, why it should fall on my head? Like uh, So he, he indirectly actually discovered gravity, why the apple should actually fall down. So. Like he just uh, discovered gravity because of that. No? The laws of gravity. Good, very good, yes. Krithi. So, how many how many laws of gravity did he discover? The same uh, three. twenty three. Okay, three. so okay, I'm I'm gonna ask each and one of you from the audience to. I mean, it's just like make it more interactive. One of you just tell me the first law of gravity. Nobody? Can I no? Okay. Can I this is fine. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Um, I'm like uh, when a body will remain uh, a body will remain at rest or moving in a constant velocity unless uh, it has been acted by an unbalanced uh, force. Good. That's the first the law. law. Yeah, okay. Uh, the second, second law is uh, the force experienced by an object is proportional to its mass uh, and its time of uh, acceleration. Uh, it's experienced. Like, the third law. The third law is very famous law. Yes, if two bodies exert force on one another, uh, like uh, the forces are equal in magnitude in the opposite direction. Every action has its equal and equal opposite direction. direction. That's right. Okay. To make sure you guys are not like sleeping. Okay. So I'm gonna just give you a uh, some sort of like drill in between. Okay. Let's move on. So where did I stop? This is what happened as Krutik, I guess I'm getting his name right. So the apple fell on Newton's head and apparently he discovered the law of gravity. And uh, that particular year was known as Anis Mirabilis, so which is actually translated as the year of wonders. So that was the year like during this uh, pandemic, everybody were idle, everybody were working from home. That's when like the gray matter started to think and they came up with new discoveries. All right, moving on. So in other words, we know about this phrase called necessity is the mother of invention, isn't it? So in other words, this quarantine time could be referred to as the father of creativity, isn't it? Do you agree or not? 
Yes, ma'am. You agree? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's very obvious with your science exposition, isn't it? You think a lot, and you have come up like with some good innovative ideas, and you have come up today to present it. So necessity is the mother of invention, and quarantine is the father of creativity. Right? Okay. Moving on. So to talk about my story, my journey in science and research. So I started liking science just like you. Like when I was in probably in my eighth or ninth standard, um, in one such science exposition, I was asked to prepare the double helical model of the DNA. You know what is the DNA? Yes, ma'am. Uh of like the function like the basic uh, genetic unit the basic genetic material so what does it expand it can you expand dna uh it's why yeah. do i see only kriti answering i think this is some 10th uh, standard portion even 9th standard should be able to answer this all right go ahead kriti and it's uh e dx0 bond nucleic uh, acid deoxy ribonucleic acid so yes, this is deoxy ribonucleic acid ma which is a uh, genetic material in the vertebrates so in case of the uh, invertebrates we have rna which is ribonucleic acid in place of dna so this is what this model which i was doing in my science exposition made me to think like So made me to think like I was asked to prepare the double helical structure using plastic balls and beads. So I had to use the plastic balls as the double helical structure of the nitrogen bases and the phosphate groups which is connecting the two helicals with the beads, colorful beads. So this got me thinking. This one such science exposition that I did in my ninth standard made me like, okay, why not to why not me uh, read more about DNA and uh, it was kind of like very fascinating. So that apparently made me to choose my career path into genetics. So that is my bread and butter, which means my, what do I do for my living? So basically as uh, the introduction uh, was told about me, I started my career as a genetic scientist and then later on uh, went on to explore a little bit about um, genomics and then I found my career path in, in cardiovascular genomics. And now I do a lot of uh, stem cells for regenerative therapy. Um, I'm sure you must have heard about stem cells and um, stem cell therapy, don't you? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So this is, I'm not going to go get in detail about this. I'm just going to give you an overview of like what I do for my living like, uh, as a scientist. So at the moment, so I do a lot of um, stem cell research, use stem cell models. And basically what is a stem cell? It's the type of cell which would be able to be modified to form any specialized cell type like a neuron or a, a skin cell or like a hair cell. So this is a cell which is more pliable, which means like we, you can designate itself to become uh, its future fate, right? Okay, so to, I'm not getting into depth of stem cell therapy and stem cells and all, regenerative uh, therapy and all, but to give you a, a little bit of idea behind regenerative medicine, I thought I would give you some idea or like, you know, what and how it all started. For that, I'll have to tell you the story of Prometheus. So, do you know who is Prometheus? Who is Prometheus? Is it the movie or the scientist man? Let me see. Gre I know Greek you would consider 
He is a Greek god. Okay. I'm going to give you some options. Who do you see? Out of the three, who do you think he is? None of the above. He's none of, none the, of the above. You sure? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. You're very sure he's none of the above, right? You are right. It's very obvious. Obviously, he's not a Kazri Khan or like he's not the next chief minister. So, who is Prometheus? So, as one of you told, Prometheus is a Greek person, or he was from the Greek historian, or something like that. So, this is basically an analogy to give you uh, a definition about regenerative medicine. So, what is so special about Prometheus? So, Prometheus is a Greek person, he was kind of a rebel during those days. Uh, so, like these medieval times have cruel practices and cruel punishments. So, he has done one such um, wrong deed or something, so, and he was punished. So, the punishment that was given to him was to hang him up, not to hang him up, like tie him up on the toppest rock of a mountain. So, and then he was made to be eaten by an eagle. So every time, every single day, the eagle comes and eats up his liver, the next day, the liver that he has regenerated or uh, redeveloped into a new liver. So this is the concept of regenerative medicine. You should take this as an analogy. So uh, although like in real life, you cannot see like a person uh, destroying his um, liver and then like start developing a new liver, that doesn't happen in real life, which means if does happen, it becomes pseudoscience. So this is basically an analogy to give you an idea what is regenerative medicine and stem cell therapy is all about. So obviously, stem cell therapy and regenerative medicine has a lot of facts and it is also very fascinating. If you get into the details uh, of reading or like researching more about this particular area. So what specifically I do is stem cell and regenerative therapy in heart or cardiovascular system. So this is the heart. And so what we do is that we take up the stem cell of deceased children or kids who develop congenital heart disease. So now congenital heart disease is something like uh, disruption or like, you know, they have like a valve disease when they are born, when they are formed in the fetus. So these babies have a very less lifetime. So in order to expand their lifetime, this stem cell therapy helps a lot to expand their lifespan. So this in a way saves a lot of life. So this is what I do. Although basically I don't do from uh, bench to bench side or directly to the clinical part. I just do the basic uh, bench work. So in other words, uh, you must be curious to know how a cardio or like a heart cell looks like in a petri dish. So this is how it looks like. So it's this is basically the heart cell at day zero. I'm going to show you the next slide with um, the same cardiomyocyte at day 10. You see the cardiomyocyte beating. So that's how it gradually develops. And then it eventually forms a big bulk of monolayer of cardiomyocytes or heart cells. So this is how you see the heart cell on a Petri dish. So this is what I do. This is very fascinating area of research. And um, it's not that much very uh, well developed in India. But then um, we are still in the stage of infancy. We are getting there. Let's see what will happen in the next 10 to 15 years, maybe. We do have some new pipeline therapies associated with regenerative medicine and stem cells. All right. So to give you a brief idea of like some scientific research and development courses in India, these are some of the institutes that offer some of the courses to get into the field of research. Um, I think there are more than this, but due to constraint of time, I'm going to keep it short. If, but if you are interested, I can like further on send you some information like how to go about um, starting from the undergraduate level to the masters and to the PhD. If you are interested, you can just contact me. 
I can give you some good directions. I'm open to it. Um, as I told you, these are some kind of like Kickstarter for aspiring scientists, the area of medical research or basic medical research. Uh, I'm also going to list some top colleges and institutes for science, scientific uh, research and development. These are some of them. Of course, there are many more. I'm not showing it here. Apart from that, there is also this governmental funding agencies like uh, Central um, CSIR India, Council for Scientific Research, and uh, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, Department of Biotechnology, also from the Indian government. These are some of the Indian fundings that do a lot of funding for the research um, areas. All right. So with this, one moment. I see. Okay. Am I good now? I'm not taking much time, isn't it? I can go ahead. Yeah? Yes, please, ma'am. Okay. So with this, I'm going to uh, give you some tips or like, you know, some uh, starter kind of um, uh, what to say, like some ideas to have a big um, mindset of like getting into the right uh, goals and how to set about the action to attain your goals. So for that, I'm going to talk about the Pareto's principle. Now, uh, Wilfredo Pareto is basically an Italian um, economist or like an engineer. He had develop this principle of Pareto principle. So it's also known as the 2080 rule or the 80-20 rule. So what the Pareto principle basically uh, tells is that, I mean, in terms of economy, it, is, uh, it tells like 20% of the population accounts for the 80% of the total land in that particular area. But this Pareto principle or the 80-20 principle could be applied to other aspects of life, like what? Like, say, for example, you have talent. So uh, you have 20% of talent. So in order to make the 20% of the talent work out, you will need to put in 80% of certain things, certain qualities. So what are they? So they include, obviously, there's no alternative for hard work. So hard work, discipline, perseverance, and effort. So in other words, in order to make the 20% of your talent work out, you will have to put in 80% of hard work, discipline, perseverance, and ethics. So this is the basic principle behind uh, the 80-20 rule. So this goes out uh, very well when you want to like, you know, make your life more productive or like organize the day plan. This will be a very good uh, kind of tip for you. So moving on. Um, for a school student point of view, it's important that we read, revise, and retain. So the best way to memorize or like, you know, keep one concept or like keep the concept in mind is to read, repeatedly read, revise, and that way you retain it more. And of course, uh, all play and no uh, all all work and no play makes the mind so idle. So you need some time to relax your mind. So there's something called the transcendental meditation. So uh, there are two different types of memory, which is like long-term memory and a short-term memory. So long-term memory could be like you know uh, you have to revise repeatedly, and retain it so that like you have that in your mind. But then. In order to make your brain active and alert, you'll have to take some break at some intervals, like say 15 to 20 minutes. So you'll have to do some transcendental meditation or like normal meditation so that like your mind is relaxed and you have a very good focus and so on. So and obviously you need to have a very good sleep cycle to make a good um, productive day. 
and in order to get rid of the distractions and to have a very good interpersonal relationships with your classmates and friends. And most importantly, it's uh, very essential to develop or inculcate the habit of reading. So reading, in other words, it's quite important to grow your vocabulary, at least like make it a point to get to know one word or like one new word in a day um, so that like you have a very good reading habit and then like you have um, a very good communicative skill. So there are certain methods like, you know, there is one particular method is the sticky vocabulary method. And of course, reading can be anything. Like it's not just your school textbooks. It could be like magazines. It could be like um, uh, like a digest or like a manorama book or whatever it is. But you uh, inculcating the habit of reading is very important. That really elevates your life to a newer level. And thank you for the patient listening. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. You have, you have truly inspired us to take up a career in research and development and showed us how interesting this field could be. Also, you have inspired us to reach for our goals no matter what. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks a lot. The ability to observe without evaluating is the highest form of intelligence. So let us all be good observers and encourage our brilliant KRM minds to demonstrate us their science projects. Are you a germaphobe? Do you not like touching unsanitary objects? So here we have Srinivasa Raghavan of grade 8 with a solution of hands-free sanitizer. Happy morning to all in our session here. I am Vishinya Sragun of Grade 8B here to present my model. Actually, I have made a contact free hand sanitizer dispenser which is totally automatic which does not need any contact. Uh, actually, I have just, uh, let's see the components. I have, the main thing is I have proximity sensor, a 1K resistor, a general purpose transistor and a USB cable and with the one was three to six volt submersible water pump. What I have done is I have connected the positive wire to the power supply input and to the collector of the transistor and the base of the the ground of the IR proximity sensor is connected to the ground of the DC pump and the ground of the USB cable is also connected to the DC pump. Uh, the collect uh, the uh, base of the transistor is connected to the positive wire of the DC pump, and the output is connected via one k resistor to the emitter of the transistor. This is the wiring diagram of my project. So uh, this is uh, hands-free sanitation as I said. Uh, since my parents are going out and coming to maintain our uh, maintain our house safe and keeping our uh, uh, how safe I have made this hands free sanitizer. I, you can see the air proximity sensor over here. This is the outlet pipe. So, as soon as I keep my hands, uh, the mug over here, imagine this is my hand. You can see the water com uh, sanitizer coming out from the outlet pipe. So this is my model. This is a very nice project during this situation. This is a very contact free. You need not touch anything. The only thing you need to do is you have to keep your hands so that the sanitizer is in your hands. We enjoyed my project. Uh, this is a very simple project. Uh, uh, once you understand the simple wiring diagram, it's going to be very easy. Thank you for watching my project. Hope you enjoy. Thank you, Srinivas. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Thank you, ma'am. You've done a good job. Okay. Um. Thank you, Raghavan. You have indeed uh, 
given a solution for the current scenario of social distancing. Thank you. Next up, we have an environmentalist, Trace Lena of Grade 4, promoting the use of solar panels, demonstrated with a model. Welcome all. Myself is Trace Lena from KRM Public School, Grade 4 K section. My project is about solar panels. I will explain what is solar panel, its usage, its working process, and with examples of using solar panel at <coughs> our own house. Solar panels are devices which are used to absorb the sun rays and convert them into electricity. It is free energy working of solar panel. Solar cells absorb the energy from sunlight. Electron begin to flow, generating an electrical current. Wire captures the electrical current and combines it with power from other solar cells. Uses of solar panel. It can be used in various sectors which include industry, automotive, agriculture, hospitals, all residential and commercial buildings. I have taken an example of how solar panels can be used in our homes to generate free electricity. Solar panels to be fixed at terrace or roof of building. Sunlight activates the panel. The cells produce electric current. The electrical energy is converted. The converted electricity powers your home. A net meter measures usage. Thank you. Thank you, Prasleena. Thank you, Prasleena, for your dedication towards saving the environment. Next, we have Kritik of Grade 10, whose visions are on a next level of technological advancements. And he is going to be presenting Augmented Reality Smart Glasses. Uh, hello everyone, uh, just a second, I'll press on the screen. Uh, so hello everyone, my name is Krithik and I'm studying Great in Karam Public School. And here I'm with my project known as uh, a Smart Vision. Uh, the next generation vision. So uh, let's get into the agenda of the complete presentation. First, I'll be addressing the problem, like what problem I'm going to solve, and then like I'll be uh, we'll be discussing about the solution, like what are the solution I'm going to propose for this particular problem, and then I'll be saying the working procedure of the particular solution, and then we will be concluding up. Uh, so let's start with the problem. So the problem which our people actually face in real life is like they don't know to actually automate tasks, and but because they are they are really slower at task. Uh, for example, let us take uh, let us take uh, for a long well, let us take people actually uh, want to enter their home and they they like they would like to actually switch on their lights. But think that AI if, if if AI actually switches on our lights, so this is the technology gap between people and us. Here, like people like if you just hear the examples of AI itself, we will be like, thinking like AI is somewhere else. But people are not able to reach that kind of AI. So my project is completely based on reaching the inaccessible part of AI to people. So uh, let us take an example. Uh, so now we have Google Assistant in our homes. So which which became an uh, which became a very common thing in our and a necessary thing in our home. So if we just take Google Assistant, what are the tasks it may do? First, it may just sing a song, or it may just it, it may just set up some timer, or set some event in the calendar, or do some minimal task. But AI, if you just uh, see AI, it's somewhere else. So it's it's somewhere a uh, very big uh, kind of ocean. But we are just, but people are just experiencing a really smaller part of it. Uh, now coming into the solution, uh, in the solution part, I would like to propose a kind of uh, device. Uh, which actually connects all the AI, uh, let it be uh, all the domains of AI, like uh, for example, let it be a timer, uh, an, av an average timer, or a 3D model designer, or let it be kind of voice activated assistant or uh, or augmented reality based assistant. So coming to AR, so AR is a vast growing field, uh, since like, uh, because 
uh, if you just take a look on uh, augmented reality uh, it has came everywhere uh, let us take uh, to to explain augmented reality in simple words i could say uh, it's it's basically our, our instagram filters when you just go into instagram or such kind of social media we have this kind of filters uh, it will be in front of us but not exactly virtually so that is what augmented reality is now why i'm proposing augmented reality since there are uh, there are a lot of ways to provide softwares and a lot of ways to provide uh, applications right so why should i actually switch to ar so the reason is uh, let's take the uh, let's take the timeline of technology at first uh, we everyone you know, like people invented landline phones so when they invented landline phones if, if a person was in a different room he have to run to the landline phone and just pick it up so it may uh, in average time it may take 12 seconds in order to pick the phone then next we invented smartphones smartphones were uh, simply mobile so it just uh, they, they can actually carry it in a pocket so it actually took seven seconds in order to activate the phone uh, let us take by just unlocking the lock and going to a particular application so it took mostly seven seconds so in order to solve this seven seconds uh, people actually invented smart watches so it acted as a companion for uh, uh, like uh, smartphones now it, using smart watches by just uh, raising our wrist it, it took somewhat one seconds or two seconds and then in order to activate it also took some time so for average it took totally three seconds now why i'm using uh, ar is like ar can be uh, like it can be accessed uh, very faster uh, let's take uh, i have just made a prototype uh, uh, i have just made a prototype glass so what this uh, glass actually does is uh, when we just wear it, uh, like it has a camera interface and uh, like a kind of things. So when we just activate it by saying a uh, word, like since we have uh, Google Assistant, we can just say, okay, Google, in order to activate it. So it, we don't have any kind of uh, tough space in order to go and unlock our watches or just unlock our mobile phones. So it can be just voice uh, activated. And then uh, to say about the parts which I actually used in this particular device is, uh, first I've used Raspberry Pi. Or uh, to say, explain about Raspberry Pi, it's simply a motherboard. Uh, a motherboard will be a very big part, but if you just take on Raspberry Pi, it is smaller than a motherboard. Uh, to say, to explain its size, it's like uh, something smaller than our credit cards. Uh, you can see a big computer can be fitted inside this small space. And then uh, next I've used a dummy frame, uh, which is nothing but the lens frame. Uh, and then I've used a camera uh, in order to uh, like capture faces. So because that is also a part of AI, You're capturing faces and stating their names. So even that is a part of AI. And then I use an OLED display. It's nothing but a display uh, which is being kept here in order to make AI features more enabled. Now what happens is, uh, like there is a particular OLED display over here. So the light rays actually go and travel to the uh, mirror uh, which is being placed over here. Uh, so light from the mirror actually bounces back uh, to a screen, uh, screen or frame over here. Now when we just wear this glass, uh, let's say a name is being, being printed over here. So I'll get an overlay uh, in my eyes itself. So I don't want to like uh, just read my phone or uh, or do stuff do, do such stuffs. So I can just, so everything will be uh, like an overlay. Uh, to say like uh, to show a small demo. So it's this is going to be the output of the device. Uh, first, uh, let's say it will just collect the data. So whenever I wear my glass, it actually collects the data. Whatever face is there, it just it just collects the faces and then. Next, it processes it. Since it's a computer, it's easy for processing. So the, it, it, it actually processes it over here, and then it shows the suitable output. Uh, so this is what the complete uh, output is. Now, uh, I'll, I'll be showing a small demo. So you can just take a look uh, on this particular video. So this is what the lens is. I've used a camera. Uh, it's, it's actually switched on. And this is going to be the frame where people can actually see uh, what's going on. And this is where I kept the I placed Raspberry Pi. So if you just take a look uh, inside the glass, uh, you can just uh, see there is a small particular overlay. Uh, so that is going to be the overlay which I've been stating. So I hope you can just see this overlay. So this overlay is going to be like, uh, uh, so, uh, so when people actually burst this glass, it will be like an overlay which is being placed in front of our eyes. So everything can be done faster. So this is why I'm, I actually choose AR. So in order to see the processing, uh, let's say, uh, like in order to see the processing inside the computer, inside the computer only this task being uh, this this task will happen. So uh, when I just execute the code or the code is running, you can just see my face in the camera and uh, like it actually frames an overlay of a box like structure and it names my it actually uh, places my name and then uh, it also shows a percentage below. So the percentage is like uh, it's like showing thirty nine percent. It's nothing but uh, I have actually programmed my face inside the computer. 
now what happens is the camera actually matches uh, with the real time data with my face and says the confidence level or the uh, or the matching level of my face and then uh, considering the uh, let's get into the next so what my prototype does is since also i have a lot of dreams in order to add a lot of ai features now for a particular time I, uh, in the prototype uh, it, it, it has a very small function it scans our face and then actually uh, obtains our face name for example my if my name is prithik if it sees my face uh, it will be like it will be showing my name or if i just uh, wearing this glass and seeing you guys uh, like it will show your name so if i just program it uh, program your faces inside this computer so uh, like so and then it displays his faces name as you saw in the before video it actually displayed the face names over this particular uh, screen so that uh, so this is what my prototype actually does now in further i have a lot of dreams to actually do this particular class first the wearability you can just see this particular uh, structure right it's very large and if i just wear and go in the road people will see a uh, weird uh, weird of me so uh, what, so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to make it more short and more precise so everyone can actually wear it like a normal glass and then uh, like uh, ne next the accessibility accessibility is nothing but actually this cost uh, yeah, this actually cost around 2000 rupees so what i'm actually uh, trying to do is i'm actually uh, i'm actually finding a lot of boats which are which are in a totally of low cost so i'm trying to make it in a, even in a, even in a lower cost so everyone can able to access it and increasing the gui feature can also make it people to access it more easier and then uh, coming to the add-ons and features so i'm going to add a lot of add-ons such as like uh, whatever i said as average step for example let us take uh, you are going to work and coming back to home at 7 pm and uh, what what a the ai does is it, it actually records your time so in the next time uh, like for example say, let's say uh, for seven days you're coming to your home at 7 pm and at the eighth day the ai will automatically switch on your lights when you just enter your home so this is what uh, this is what i'm trying to bring a lot of add-ons and feature then yeah increasing the ai efficiency so since i'm having some a plain oled display which can display only text and few graphics uh, what i'm trying to do is like we have uh, we have google assistants right so if you just say if you just ask something to google it just says it's uh, uh, through voice but it would be better that if some virtual person is standing uh, in front of us so i'm what i'm trying to do is whenever we activate this particular glass for example if i'm saying uh, let, let me name this glass glass as vision uh, whenever, I, whenever i say okay vision or hey vision it actually um, virtualizes a person in front of me and if the person speaks to me so it will be like a face to face conversation in a virtual world and then uh, so that's what my complete uh, project is so that's all for uh, that's all so thank you for uh, watching my video and uh, i hope this project will actually rock thank good you. job kritik i have yeah, something to ask you like yeah um have you patented this as yet or like are you waiting for patent or yes patent? No, i'm trying have you to patent patent it? like uh, I'm like the like I'm I'm building more features so I can patent it all at once, ma'am. Yeah, you better patent so, it as soon as possible because like so so many people think in terms of like these kind of ideas, and it's better that like you know when you whenever you present it in a, a public forum like this, you could be scooped. Scooped as in like uh, you know if you go for another institute or like another school, you might be your concept your idea might be copied. So it's better that you pay it as as soon as possible. And uh, are you getting any funding from any anywhere, any government? Oh no, from no, no. It's or completely self-funding, ma'am. Since I have my own institution, I'm getting from funds your parents. From that. Yes, ma'am. From my parents and from my institution. How much? How much did you spend? Tell me, like. How much, ma'am? Yeah. I spent around two thousand, ma'am. Uh, two thousand to two thousand five hundred. Oh, that that's not very. That's not very. Uh, I mean, it's very reasonable. But in case in future, if you have any like complicated ideas, um, you can, um, you know, like our Indian government supports a lot of funding agency for all these mm -hmm. kind of like innovative inno uh, inventions and all. Just be aware of this instead of like you know in in future. Okay, good sure. luck. You have a good future. Thank you. Thank you. While we are here imagining stuff like that, you on the other hand showed a possibility. Looks like you're way ahead of our time. Anyways, thank you and I really hope your idea is made into reality. Now before uh, we move on, I request Dr. Anachaviri ma'am to please uh, stop sharing his screen. Oh really? I'm so sorry.
Actually, it stopped, ma'am. As soon as Krithik shared, your screen has been stopped. So no worries. You can continue, no Ashya. Yeah, no okay. worries. Okay. Next. I'm no more sharing Wait. it, right? Just make sure. Ma'am, it is yeah, there in the back, ma'am. Krithik was Why, simultaneously uh, presenting. All right. It's all right. still there. In the back. I think I stopped it, right? No? No. It is. Gone? That's fine, ma'am, simultaneously. I think that's fine, ma'am, because, because. I think it shows me like I'm no longer presenting. Okay, ma'am. Yes. Wait a second. So next up, we have Roja of Grade 10 presenting a working model of a human heart. Art, that's interesting. Happy morning. I'm Roja from Grade 10D. Today I'm going to talk about circulation of blood in heart. The human heart is one of the most important organs responsible for sustaining life. It is a muscular organ with four chambers. The human heart functions throughout a person's lifespan and is one of the hardest working muscle in the human body. The functions of human heart in any organism is to maintain a constant flow of blood throughout the body. There are three, two types of circulation, pulmonary circulation, systemic circulation. Pulmonary circulation, it is a portion of circulation responsible for carrying deoxygenated blood away from the heart to the lungs and then brings oxygenated blood back to the heart. Systemic circulation. It is an another portion of circulation where the oxygenated blood is pumped from the heart to every organ and deoxygenated blood comes back again to the heart. Some facts about heart. The heart pumps around 5.7 liters of blood in a day throughout the body. The average male heart weights around 280 to 340 grams. In male, in female it weights around 230 to 280 grams and adult heart beats around 60 to 100 times per minute. Now I am going to show how the blood circulates in heart. This is the blood. Here blood is circulating. Thank you. Thank you, Roja, for showing us a vivid demonstration of how our heart works. Good job, Roja. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, Sapnam. I see one pupil already sleeping there. <laughs> Sapnam. Next, we have a little scientist, Lakshindi, of grade 3 with his experiment of fiction with rice. Three going to show an experiment. 
argument on right friction. Friction is the resistance to motion of one object moving relative to another. Thank you, Lakshan, for your adorable yet smart project. Next, we have linkage of grade 11 with his idea of replacement of cell phone towers with Wi-Fi towers. Arshia? Yes, it is Ravi Nandan, ma. not linkage. Ravi Nandan, call Ravi Nandan. Okay, uh, now we have Ravi Nandan of grade 11 with his idea of replacement of cell phone towers with Wi Fi towers. Uh, sorry to interfere. Let us not bother too much our guest because there it is. Oh, no problem. No problem. I can. No, no, it's okay. I'll, I'll be there for another 45 minutes. No problem. No Thank problem you. at all, uh, sir. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. So kind of. No. <laughs> Make it fast, please. Move on to the next, Arshia. Oh, yes, ma'am. If they have any network problem, don't wait for, for an order. Just we can skip something. Later, if they can join. So next up, we have Atid Ahmed of Grade Six with his demonstration and presentation regarding polymer plastics. Yeah. Now I will share my screen. Yes. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? No. Okay, right? Yes, we can see you. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Today, now I'm going to talk on topic about the polymer plastic. And I have this Ati Bahamad from CC. And my aim is to show that plastics are made up of cell like structure, made up of molecules called polymer. Excuse me, Ati. Your uh, screen is not visible. Yes, ma'am. Wait, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, no. Yes, yes, it's getting. Please wait. Oh, okay. You can continue, Atif. All the best. Yes, sir. Yeah, good morning everyone. Today, 
I'm going to talk in a topic about the polymer plastic. Now I am Yes Abi Bahamad from Sikhi. <clears throat> My aim is to show that plastic are made up of cell-like structure made up of molecules called polymer. My aim is to show that plastics have pol polymer in it. And the principle behind this is to show that plastics are made up of polymers called low-density polyethylene. So they are polyethylene bags are low density. That means they are less in weight. They are also durable. They are flexible, in which they we can stretch it. We can also bend it. They are resistant to moisture. That means they are waterproof. Okay, here are some examples of polyethylene bags. The materials required to do this experiment is you need a plastic bag, a ziplock bag. We need some four to five sharp pencils and a cup of water. Now I will show the demonstration of this experiment. Now you can see here. I have a plastic bag in it. Now I will pour water in in it. Sorry, Ate. Sorry, Ate. Prince, you are screen. Now I will put a tight uh, knot. Now I have. A... Now I will poke the pencil. I will poke the pencil. Now you can see here the continuation of polymers uh, gets detached and is moved and it moves apart. After a second, the polymers push back towards the pencil and it forms a temporary seal. So the water will not leak out till I take the pencil out. But after I take the pencil out, the water rushes out because the seal which is formed is temporary. And the continuation of polymers is will be completely detached. You can see here the water uh, leaks out. Just be careful with your computer. Yeah. Now. Now, now I will say some facts about plastic. Plastics are biodegradable in water. Uh, they do not degrade in also in soil. It takes approximately thousand years to decompose in landfills, which is very surprisingly to hear. Plastic bottles take four fifty years or more to degrade. So plastics are made up of polyethylene terephthalate. It is nearly impossible. To decompose PET plastics in soil, the UV light from the sun, which is the ultraviolet rays from the sun, can break plastic down. But it takes a long time to degrade. So recently, bio it is wiser to use degradable plastic rather than non-biodegradable plastic because it it does not have my microbes and the microbes. Change the degradable plastics into oxygen, uh, wa water, carbon dioxide, and biomass. Biodegradable plastics produces renewable raw materials, uh, microorganism, and petroleum. To use plastic judiciously to save our environment, to keep our next future good. Thank you. Have a nice day. Good effort. Thank you, Atit, for a perfect explanation of your topic. Next up, okay. next up, we have Arinath of Grade Nine with a pretty cool model of hydraulic crane. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, I request a tip to please uh, mute your mic. Arunath of grade 9, are you there? Okay, so moving on, we have K. Aishwarya of grade 5 with a comparative study on the absorption of water using different soils. Happy morning friends, I am K. Aishwarya from grade 5a. My topic is absorption of water for different soils. The aim of this experiment is to show the absorption of water in red soil, black soil, latin soil and sandy soil. Materials required are funnel, transparent glass, a measuring cup, sa soil sample, a spoon, scale, water, and tissue paper. First, place the funnel on the transparent glass covering all its sides. Now, fold the tissue paper in shape of the funnel and fit it in the mouth of the funnel. Now, add the 100 gram of red soil on the tissue paper. Now, pour the 100 ml of water evenly on the soil. Continue to pour the water until you see the droplet from the funnel. Now measure the water inside the glass. Now if you measure the cup, it is 40 ml. Now, take the tissue paper. Now, fold the tissue paper in shape of the funnel and fit it in the mouth of the funnel. Now, add the 100 gram of sandy soil in the tissue paper. Now pour the water, pour the 100 ml of water evenly on the soil. Continue to pour the water until you see the droplet from the funnel. Now measure the water inside the glass. If you measure the cup, it is 70 ml. Now take the tissue paper. Now fold the tissue paper in shape of the funnel and fit it in the mouth of the funnel. Now add the 100 gram of black soil in the tissue paper. Now pour the, pour the 100 ml of water evenly on the soil. Continue to pour the water until you see the droplet from the funnel. Now measure the water inside the glass. It was 20 ml.
Now take the tissue paper. Now fold the tissue paper in the tip of the funnel and fit it in the mouth of the funnel. Now add the 100 gram of flattened soil in the tissue paper. Now, pour 100 ml of water evenly on the soil. Continue to pour the water until you see the droplet from the funnel. Now, measure the water inside the glass. It was 50 ml. Conclusion. Thus, black soil absorbs more water than any other soils. Black soil is used to grow water intensive crops like cotton, etc. Thank you. Good job, Aishwarya. Where did you get all these three types of soil? Where did you get them? My garden, ma'am. Oh, you got it from your garden? You have a big uh, pit there for all three types of soil? Yes, ma'am. Good, good to know. Thank you, Aishwarya, for explaining so well. I hope you make a successful agricultural scientist. Now, we have another bright mind. Pratik of grade 7 with a model demonstrating the detection of temperature using sensors. Happy morning all. This is Pratik standard in KRM Public School. So, I have done a mini radar using electronics. So, let me to share my screen. Okay, now I assume that you can see my screen, right? Yes. So, so I'm Pratik Sarin Saman, star in KRA Public School and have done a mini radar using Arduino. Okay? So, first of all, let us understand what is a radar base. Radar is known as radio detection and training system, which is, uh, we can even see in some movies where in some ships will be having some radars to detect any obstacle is present in front of them. If uh, if yes, they will be just like turning the ship and they will like they will avoid the uh, ship to hit that uh, rock or something like thing. So even we can just use this in the car, like in high end cars we will be seeing this, the radars will be present in a different time. Okay, so this is what radar is. It is the main thing of the radar is to use uh, the radar is to detect any obstacle is present in front of it or not. Now what I had done is just, just do a mini radar with a sensor called ultrasonic. Uh, and you can see the image of ultrasonic sensor right here. So this is an ultrasonic sensor. So what happens is in ultrasonic we can see two eyes, uh, two eyes like a uh, structure right here. So one is transmitter and Another is receiver. So what will happen here is the transmitter will send a ultrasonic wave which we can't hear it because the human has a certain limit for uh, hearing some sounds and etc. So this is uh, this is like very high so we cannot hear it. So what will happen is it will just send and here is going to be the receiver. So if any obstacle is present in front of it, it will go and hit it and come back to the receiver. So the receiver will be receiving the this uh, the ultrasonic sense, ultrasonic waves back. So this is how the ultrasonic uh, sensor works. I have just done a simple radar like this. So let me show you one demo. But before demo, I just want to make sure that I will be explaining my code. Okay. First of all, I just used Arduino, right? So there are two parts that are present here. One is that display part and other is the processing part. Okay. 
the processing is nothing but the Arduino's board where the board will be programmed for uh, like it will just control the other sensors right so I have another device logged in in this meeting the name is Pratik GK demo where you can just go ahead and I will also show you that so as you can see right here this is the one which I am talking about so here we got the ultrasonic sensor right now this is the ultrasonic sensor which will transmit and receive and inside this uh, box I just packed this box because of some like issues, issues. Uh, and here is the board inside the box where it controls everything right here so let me show you how we can just receive the output it will definitely look like the real one so here we go this is the processing board which is for uh, like see the output basically it is for seeing the output so let me just run this thing and you guys can see that yeah, I will just run it. So for that power source, I'm plugging it in my computer. The cable is connected in my computer right here for the power source. So now what I'll be doing is, here is the sensor, right? You can as well see the uh, Pratik GK demo for this circuit. If I keep hands here, you can see the red lines are like appearing in the radar. That means, uh, Basically, what it demands is there's some obstacles in front. So you can even just see that sometimes it goes lengthy and short. That reminds that the distance for that. In in the down, you can see some kind of object and angle and distance. This reminds the current angle is measuring object. If I just keep anything and it's in a range, definitely the object will show that it is in a range. And we can see angle. That angle is measuring. And also, we can see the distance of that object. It won't be very accurate, but instead it will be approximate. Okay, so as you can see, the approximate thing is showing the distance. According to the distance, the lines will also be lengthy. This is how you can just use. This is just a mini demonstration, which will not be more powerful like a real one. So it is not a powerful, but still we can just use the simple sensor to demonstrate like this radar, how this radar works. And then I have also done another thing. I assume that you can just see that. So in my Pratik GK demo uh, device, I have logged in that. You can just see that. That is called an agriculture box, which is also used for agriculture, which has some facilities to measure the temperature, humidity, air quality, pressure, and soil moisture. And we can just, I'll be just demonstrating it. As you can see, here is that. Currently, it is showing, uh, sending data to sarasopro.com. That means it is my website, okay? Just, I'm just storing it. You can see that this is the temperature showing air quality, it is 16%. Sometimes you'll be getting more data, that is, if the sensor can't read, like, if it is just like this, the sensor sometimes cannot read that. So that's why we are getting sometimes more data but you can see uh, air quality 16% and we'll be getting the light the amount of light present in our environment light is 45% currently in my, in my home currently I have just turned on the light so it shows something and let us test the soil thing now as you can see soil is 5% that is there is no soil and soil is dry so here we go I just bought two plants right now Okay, and uh, I just also bought some cup of uh, just some water for that. So let me show you that. So if I just just insert this, okay, and in the next time we'll be getting soil, right? So now just take a look at the soil data. Now take a look at the soil thing. It says fifty-eight percent. Okay, now you can understand that there are fifty-eight percent moisture is present in the soil. <laughs> So now what I'll be doing is I just have a cup of water. I will just pour a little bit and then again I will just 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 insert that thing. Now in the next time you can see the soil will be changed. 
now you can see the soil is 74 percent that means this reminds that there are 74 percent moisture is present for this plant so by this method we can just see that is the soil moisture is enough for this plant or not so only for that reason we can use this uh, for agriculture so that is what uh, my project is thank you good thinking prateek uh, did you develop the software for the mini radar by yourself the software that you used for um, the mini yeah. radar you, yeah. you develop yourself yeah it is not meant as a software man it is basically just a piece program of, yeah it is just a piece of code which is uh, okay. simple for syntax mm -hmm. good and um, like what type what decibels of sound would it be able to detect like would it go for a minute decibels or like a large decibel the decibel of sound yeah we can just go with a large it depends on the sensor man. okay this is just a normal thing which normal sensor even just uh, take the distance okay if the sensor is present it cannot measure after certain distance it is too far to measure it so it won't measure mm -hmm. so like this is the mini one like it is not powerful as the real one Okay, good luck. Good luck for your bright future. Thank you, ma'am. Young minds and a great amount of knowledge. Pratik, you are a true incarnation of young and talented. Thank you. Next up, we have Ravinandan of grade 11 with his project of plastic tire. Hello friends, I am Ravinandan of grade 11B studying in Kerala School. My topic is plastic tiles. What you are using with the plastic juice bottles? I made a, another way to use recycle it. These plastics, if we put into a garbage pit, these are non-biodegradable as well as and uh, people are used to burn these things. So I made a tile using this. Okay. I am going to share a PPT. Let's see how to make this tile. Okay, the materials you need is waste plastic bottles, cement and sand. Now let's take the plastic bottles and cut it into small pieces as shown. After cutting these plastic bottles into chips, uh, we need to make cement and sand mixture. The, if it takes four scoops of cement, we need to take two scoops of sand. In that mixture, I have mixed it and uh, uh, sprinkle some plastic strips into it and uh, we need to transform it to, into a mold. I have done a mold using cardboard. After transforming it, let it dry for minimum six hours and sprinkle some more water it on it into for two days to make it more stronger. And our tile is ready. This is our result. As I said, these sticks are non-biodegradable and people are using to burn these things. It causes more air pollution. So I found another way. Where I am using these tiles is, I am using these tiles in the garden. I will show where I am using it. See, I am using my tiles here. It will look... Uh, Simply nice. Thank you. That's very thoughtful, Ravi Nandan. Making non biodegradable recycling. Very thoughtful. Thank you, Ravi Nandan. Thank it, you. It was truly great to watch you make best out of waste. And thank you for saving the environment. Thank you. 
by your side. Finally, we have the school seniors, Shakti Murgan and T. Sanjit of Grade 12, here with a research paper on the topic, in vitro booster vaccination to rapidly generate antigen-specific human monoclonal antibodies for COVID-19. Pretty complex, right? So let's understand it from them. Shakti Murgan and um, Sanjit, are it visible, ma'am? Yes, visible. Visible. Sanjit and Shakti Murgan. Okay, ma'am. So good morning, honorable chief guest, teachers, and my dear friends. Today, me and Shakti have an interesting research paper about the topic in vitro booster vaccination to rapidly generate antigen specific human monoclonal antibodies for COVID 19. Good morning, everyone, and a cold good evening to our chief guest. So, I am Shakti, and let me break down our topic to better understanding for everyone. So, we all know that like vaccines are the most efficient tool to prevent infectious disease. So we introduce here an in vitro booster vaccination to which relies on antigen dependent activation of human memory B cells in culture. So we are going to naturally increase our <coughs> immunity of our body to fight against COVID-19. Introduction. Now I'm going to explain you how when coronavirus actually spreads to, to our human beings. So primarily the virus spreads through touching the surface with has, which has the virus on it or through fluids. So what happens after it enters our body is the entry of SARS-CoV-2 into host cells. It's largely dependent upon the spike glycoprotein present on the surface of the virus particle. If you see, if you see the picture of the COVID-19, it has small spike structures. It binds to the host cell receptors. That is the ACE2 receptors on, the, on our lungs. So the green tubular structure in the picture is the receptor. So it allows for the fusion between the viral membrane and the host cell membrane to occur. It has since been determined to be a sufficient entry mechanism for host cell infection. This is how the SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus enters our lungs to multiply and spread throughout the body. So now we can see the materials and methods of what we are going to use in the upcoming procedure. So first, let's see the traditional hybridoma technology. To make it simpler, uh, take a look at the image. So we are taking an example here as a mouse. So this mouse is already an immunized mouse. That means it's naturally immune towards a disease. So we, we are extracting B cells from that mouse and adding myeloma cells to it, which uh, will um, ultimately express the monoclonal antibodies, which is fighting against the particular disease. And hence, it is immunized, immunized to the disease. So the next technology is single cell amplification from various B cell populations. So again, take a look at the image. So from the animals, we are extracting the blood, then the B cell. Then we are selecting the particular B cells we required for the, in this our case, COVID-19. So we are selecting the particular B cells which are immune towards COVID-19, which are producing antibodies which binds to the antigen of the COVID-19 virus. And we are separating them and we are replicating them with the process of RT-PCR and uh, we are modifying it with the cell-free protein synthesis and then we are uh, evaluating it with the ELISA confirmatory test. So this test is like, uh, it confirms whether the, the antibody we chose is the correct or uh, the perfect one for the, which is binding with the COVID-19, that is the spike protein on it. The next uh, method is single plasma cell integration method. So single plasma cell integration or spin technology like uses uh, microfluid technology to isolate the antibodies what we uh, confirm with the ELISA evaluation. So now I'm going to explain you the important material which we are going to use in this project. That is CPG oligonucleotides. So CPG is a short synthetic single stranded DNA molecule which improves the function of professional antigen presenting cells and boosts the generation of humoral and cellular vaccine specific human responses. That is it triggers a protein in our body to rapidly generate antigen specific antibodies. So in the picture, you can see the various applications of the CPG oligonucleotides. So next is the nanoparticle coating. 
So this is a we are introducing a new topic that is avidin biotin complex, which is very useful for purifying or detecting proteins conjugated to either a component of interaction. So we are using streptavidin as our avidin and CPG as our biotin complex. Then these nanoparticles are incubated at four degrees Celsius and then resuspended on the B cell culture, which we harvested from the uh, uh, the immunized hu human. And then the coating efficiency is measured by a technique called as flow cytometry. So in the diagram, we can see the bi avidin biotin complex with the target antigen. So we are going to explain it in the further procedure steps. Ma, you are in mute. The one who is speaking, you are in mute. Oh, sorry, sorry, ma'am. So the, now let's see the procedure. So the first is harvesting of patient-derived B cells. So this is not a hard job, like uh, finding a patient who is naturally immune towards COVID-19. So we are extracting the B cells from their blood sample. Then comes the single cell amplification as the extended method. Uh, this is the uh, finding of this uh, particular antibody which uh, is fighting against COVID-19. Then we are isolating the antigen-specific plasma cells. Plasma cells are like the cells which B cells convert into convert into after we isolate the antigen-specific for to fight against COVID. And the next step is single cell technology to analyze the native pair antibody gene. That is to confirm like the with the ELISA confirmatory test as told before to confirm whether we got the correct antibody to fight a with uh, bonds with the antigen on the COVID-19. So next comes the polymerase chain reaction or PCR reaction. In this, we clone the antibodies what we found, so replicate it in a large scale. And the next step is nanoparticles coated with CPG consisting specific antibody and antigen. So this is like the whole vaccine by itself. So that we chose the nanoparticle to coat with CPG and consisting a specific antibody we extracted from the patient and the antigen from the COVID-19. And the next process is sonication. Sonication is like uh, another test to, or a filtering process to like filter the uh, perfectly coated nanoparticles from the non-perfect to be more precise in the results. And next comes the trials. As we all know, the trials are like it, we, we should conform with whether it works or not, right? So so that we go on trials. Then, uh, as you can see, the image. This is the codon of the spike protein in COVID-19. So now. So now we are going to discuss how we got this idea. So mostly infection by most of the enveloped virus requires a binding protein. So we checked few viruses and came to a conclusion with HIV as our benchmark, which shares a hairpin structure of the spike protein with COVID-19. But it has no sequence homology. So we did a comparative study on the project done by Irene Sanjuan 19 at 2017 on HIV involving CPG as an adjuvant. So we arrived at the conclusion of using this process for using S2 spike protein as the antigen and coating it with streptavidin CPG complex under in vitro conditions to produce specific antibodies. Again, Shakti, Shakti Sorry, <laughs> so this is the result of the at uh, the sir we talked about iron sanjivan nandin so as you can see he coated nanoparticles with cpg for tetanus toxicity in his case so the result is like he coated nanoparticles with ctp which is soluble C cpg and you can see the result and the replication process below like first it's 1 then 18 then 217 where the particulate ct cpg So as we told, now we are here at the results. So the previous studies have demonstrated that in vitro stimulation of B cells by TLRS is an efficient way to in inducing the activation and proliferation of the cell. So this is an efficient method for the to fight against COVID-19. And we coated septavirin polyester nanoparticles with a mixture of bitinolated anti-K antibody and TLR ligand CPG. So now I'm going to explain why we selected anti-K antibody, even though our body has more, many antibodies. Like this anti-K antibody is about 60% of circulating human B cells contain this anti-K BCR, that is B cell receptor. 
so we are obtaining the human b cells from a healthy donors and we are and culturing it in the presence of a cytokine medium so cytokine are a important signaling molecule in our body that controls the immune responses and the culture contains the nanoparticles coated with anti k antibody and cpg and after uh, after uh, after this method the result is in a steady increase in igg hormone so we can conclude that this point that the in vitro particulate cpg via bcr triggers a selective antibody production so this uh, type of particulating anti k cpg has a high potential in triggering plasma cell in the differentiation and antibody secretion so we could hypothesize that the finding to use this protocol specifically to activate b cells with infection uh, infectious antigen in vitro in, in our case covid 19 so now we chose s2 spike protein and we perform single cell sorting to obtain a avidin biotin complex that is s2 cpg complex then we pcr amplify it to get multiple copies and to express its recombinant antibody genes from individual plasma cells so assessing the gene under elisa confirmatory test as we told before can show the required antibodies for specific antigen responses and it is important to establish whether these antibodies exhibit a certain degree of specificity for s2 or whether they were simply polyreactive so with the alpha con confirmatory test we are again like confirming to be more precise with the vaccination so some of these anti influenza antibodies generated by this technique can recognize multiple strains of the virus and be able to neutralize its ability to infect cells so these are the research papers uh, we referred from the world journal and as well as indian journal so we can conclude by saying that uh, this could be the possible way of kind So finding the cure against COVID-19, and, and this could, could be a be stepping a, stone to win the war yeah. against COVID-19. Thank you all for listening to our paper presentation. This is Shakti and, and Sanjit. Sanjit. Thank you all. Yes, yeah, Shakti and Sanjit. I'm just curious. Where did you do this entire project? And actually, we are just hypothesize. Like we are, it's a, uh, just a uh, research paper, ma'am. Like we you are not. You didn't do it. So it's just a hypothesis, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Did the you results? do some experiment? Uh, no, no, ma'am. Ma yeah, how did you generate the results? Did you actually do the experiment? Actually, low sorting, the single. The project. Yes, the... I'm. It's just a casual. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma actually, casual, yeah. uh, the I actually told the project done by Iron Sir, like he actually got the results for to fight against HIV. Yeah. He used the same uh, nanoparticle mm -hmm. coating for his vaccination. so we thought that there is some similarity between hiv and covid so this might also work so that's why we concluded it like this could be the possible cure because we can't prove it at like we didn't do anything in so this is more or less like a review and a hypothesis right yes, it's it's like then a we added hypothesis. our own so you uh, reviewed several complex. papers and you kind of hypothesized your own concept yes, yes ma'am isn't exactly it exactly okay the... so i'll give you a very good lead so if you are further in, i mean interested into further this particular idea you can uh, refer to kings institute in adyar gindi kings institute tuberculosis research center they do more of these kind of like tuberculosis and covid uh, avian influenza kind of research work if you are interested or curious just look into their website kings institute from gindi and tuberculosis research institute chetpat yes sir ma'am Yes, any questions can anyone help that any other doubt or question okay <laughs> anybody have any questions or any doubt what you were explaining is out of the head uh, yes ma'am that's why we are giving time for uh, you should give them some time to assimilate yes, and then come up with some questions Actually, so we'll surely get yeah. back to you both uh, once we have formulated our questions. As of now, uh, I think we should move on. Uh, so thank you, Sanjit and Shakti, for explaining this research paper in a way that we could understand. 
and I am sure it was a very impressive work. John Glenn, a former astronaut, stated once, the most important thing we can do is inspire young minds and to advance the kind of science, math, and technology education that will help youngsters take us to the next phase of space travel. Now that we have seen wonderful science demonstrations and presentations by our KRM students, I request Dr. Anichaveri Devendran, ma'am, to share her experience with us on our virtual exposition. Oh, it's coming to an end, is it? I thought like it was gonna go for another three or four hours. That's what I was told. Like on the three. Okay, so it's it's like uh, I didn't felt like the time had gone. It was so interesting. All the pupils were coming with uh, inquisitive ideas and innovations. It's really very um, interesting to see young minds come up with new ideas, thinking out of the box. Uh, to mention a few, I really liked, um, I don't know, I don't know the names, probably the face. I think like Pratik, Kritik, Sanjit, uh, the COVID guys, and um, the girl who were comparing the three types of soil, and Atib, Atib Ahmad, Polymer, the guy who's very, <laughs> all of you done a very good job. Very, um, probably like you will come up with more ideas in the coming years and very, um, very good luck for a bright future. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am, for spending a valuable time with us and we feel extremely privileged to have had you with us today. Um, a grateful heart is a magnet for miracles. So here we have the HOD of Science Department, Malati Ma'am, to extend the gratitude on behalf of all of us and present the vote of thanks. Happy morning, Ma'am. So really, it is a uh, wonderful day, auspicious day in the history of KRM Public School because first time we have conducted the um, expo virtually. 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 So it is really. Uh, really a uh, different experience for us and um, usually our children of KRM they are very challenging even though in the pandemic period we are away from each other by using their uh, project they made us to together now nearly 500 children they are ready to excite today ma'am my salute to the children and really I, this happens due to the cooperation of our parents only so my first uh, heartful thanks goes to my beloved students and the parents of KRM who made this. And you have made this uh, a moment as a greenery in all our memories. Then ma'am, really our, our chief guest ma'am. We are, we are oh, very... Please don't call me ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you are there from uh, very far away from us, but uh, um, do you... In the online, you are very so close to us today. Your words are very impressive. Sure, our children will follow the three R's, read, revise, and retain them. Actually, we are thankful for you, for your guidance, blessings, and for our children, for their achievements in the present and future, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. No, no problem. No problem at all. Thank you. It's been a very great pleasure to be a part of this virtual exposition. I had a great time. Uh, with all the exhibits that the pupils were doing. They did a very great job, especially, I mean, to inculcate these kind of like innovative ideas. It's the very great responsibility of the teachers, isn't it? Without you behind, they cannot come up with all these kind of like innovative ideas and um, thinking or, and critical or lateral thinking. So it's a big um, uh, congratulation to all the students and I mean, uh, of course, the teachers and the management for encouraging them uh, to come up with all these kind of like ideas and showcase their talents. Good job. Thank you, Great. Thank you, ma'am. I feel this is the correct time to thank my teaching and non-teaching friends and the respectable H uh, HMs, VPs and fearful HODs who gave valuable suggestions to us to make this function as a grand success. And I extend my thankful to all my Facebook viewers who are extending their support to us virtually. And this is the high time for us. 
to thank our beloved principal sir revered ceo sir and honorable dean sir who gave the valuable suggestions and gave ample permission to us to give a golden feather to the cap of krm public school yeah good start uh, department of science the you are leading this year exposition especially in our school as you know that we used to conduct the exposition for individual subject not only science and computer science mathematics and other thing and you are setting a very good example today and the presence of uh, our anshali ma'am is a great uh, as as a peak of uh, breathing the way how she is down to earth interacting with the children and appreciating them that is more than enough for this exposition i think it's a good start as i told you good it need to continue right the, i think the whole day you are planning to uh, conduct the presentations and other thing please encourage the children as much as possible the important things you can videograph right so thank you every teacher and thank you every students and of course the parents for your great encouragement behind all the best for the experience yeah